This video was brought to you by Brilliant. Since the collapse of the Soviet Union, Russia has been the preeminent power in Central Asia. It's been the driving force behind the region's economy and guaranteed its security via the Collective Security Treaty Organization. Unfortunately for Moscow though, as the war in Ukraine preoccupies Russia's army and the accompanying sanctions wear down its economy, its influence in the region has waned and China is now stepping up to replace it as the regional superpower. So in this video, we're going to take a look at how Russia's influence in Central Asia is waning, why Central Asia is ditching Russia for China, and whether this could become a problem for Sino-Russian relations. Before we start, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing and ringing the bell to stay in the loop and be notified when we release new videos. Before Putin invaded Ukraine, Russia actually had pretty good relations with Central Asia. Russia had deep economic and security ties with most of Central Asia and was widely considered to be the regional superpower. Economically, Russia was the largest trading partner for most Central Asian countries, providing their main source of foreign direct investment and a large import market for Central Asian mining exports, including copper, iron and uranium. A handful of Central Asian states, most notably Kazakhstan and Kyrgyzstan, were also members of the Eurasian Economic Union, a Russian-led single market that succeeded the Eurasian Customs Union. Russia was also the destination of choice for Central Asian economic migrants. Every year, hundreds of thousands of Central Asians would flock to Russia in search of better paying jobs. And in 2013, there are an estimated 4 million Central Asians living and working in Russia. Conversely, thanks to Central Asia's Soviet past and the Soviet Union's population transfer policies, Central Asia was home to some 7 million ethnic Russians. It's not just economics either. In terms of security, Russia has basically guaranteed the region's entire security via the Collective Security Treaty Organization, usually referred to as the CSTO. Formed in 1992 and intended as Russia's answer to NATO, the CSTO is an alliance composed of six post-Soviet states, Russia, Belarus, Armenia, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, and Tajikistan. Article 4 of the CSTO's founding charter is basically a mutual defense clause, akin to NATO's Article 5. And for most of the region's post-Soviet history, it worked pretty well. And Russia was basically able to keep the peace, despite a whole load of border disputes between member states. You get the idea then. Before the war, Russia was Central Asia's main trading partner and security guarantor. However, Putin's invasion of Ukraine has changed all of this, and relations between Russia and most of Central Asia have quickly deteriorated. Let's start with the economy. While Russia's economy has fared better than many expected against Western sanctions, it's mainly been kept afloat by high oil and gas prices, not a strong internal market, and the country is spending all of its surplus on funding the special military operation. That means that it's no longer the destination of choice for Central Asian migrants, and the diversion of trade through Central Asia means that their home markets are actually looking way more attractive than Russia. Last year, annual real wage growth came in at about 10% in Uzbekistan and 7% in Kazakhstan, which is why immigration from Central Asia to Russia fell in 2022, despite a massive uptick in vacancies due to conscription. Similarly, a ballooning military budget means that the Kremlin can't invest as much as it used to, and the problem is only set to get worse in the future if Russia's economy stagnates further. On the security front, the fact that Russia's military is tied up in Ukraine means that it can no longer play the role of security guarantor, which is why Central Asia has seen an uptick in conflict since the war began. For instance, there was an escalation in violence between Armenia and Azerbaijan last year, and in September, violence broke out along the Kyrgyzstan-Tajikistan border. In both cases, Russia was unable to intervene because it was tied up in Ukraine, and that's essentially rendered the CSTO as pointless. Because 
Well, no other country has the capacity to defend any of the other countries, and Russia accounts for the vast majority of its spending. Russia's estimated annual military budget is about $65 billion. That's about 40 times larger than the next biggest spender, Kazakhstan. And it means that Russia accounts for something like 95% of all military expenditure for the alliance. For context, the US accounts for about 70% of all military spending within NATO, and people often say that other NATO members rely too heavily on the US. Clearly without Russia then, the organization becomes a bit pointless, and it already looked a bit shaky. Armenia has publicly floated leaving the group, and in October, Kyrgyzstan's military refused to participate in the CSTO's joint exercises in Kazakhstan, citing continuing tensions with Tajikistan. Central Asian countries are also anxious about relying too heavily on Russia for their security, given their Soviet past and Putin's neo-Soviet ambitions in Ukraine. Anyway, as Central Asia's economic and security ties with Russia recede, China is apparently stepping in to replace them. When it comes to the economy, in 2022, China became the region's largest trading partner, with Central Asia's total trade to China now worth $70 billion, up more than 40% from 2021, and nearly double that of Russia. China also has stepped up its infrastructure investment in the region, and Beijing is now involved in more than 90 projects across the region, many as part of its Belt and Road Initiative. And in a sense, China was always a more natural economic partner for Central Asia than Russia. Central Asia is mostly an energy and commodity exporter, while China is the world's largest energy and commodity importer. China is also better at building infrastructure than Russia is, which is what many Central Asian countries are most in need of right now. In terms of security, China used to be uncomfortable with the idea of acting as a security guarantor, largely because it had an underdeveloped and underfunded military with limited real-world experience. However, as China's military spending has increased, and China becomes more willing to project its power abroad, the idea of China replacing Russia as the region's security guarantor is no longer quite as far-fetched as it once looked. Interestingly, the other player here is the EU. With Russia's withdrawal from Central Asia, countries including Armenia and Kyrgyzstan have actually started looking to the EU for security assistance too. Anyway, China's newfound influence in the region has become a point of tension between Beijing and Moscow, and there's clearly a battle for influence going on here. For their part, China have stepped up their political presence in the region via the new C plus C5 grouping, which is basically just China and five Central Asian countries, while Putin, in return, has stepped up the frequency of his visits to the region. Unfortunately for the Kremlin, though, the headwinds are not blowing their way. It's hard to imagine Russia maintaining its status as the region's security guarantor after the war, and the gulf between the Russian and Chinese economy will only widen in the future. Ultimately, we'll have to wait and see what happens. But when making videos like this, we're cautious to use a ton of data analysis to interpret military strategy and economic objectives. And that kind of analysis isn't just crucial for our jobs. As the world becomes more driven by AI and data, your job will likely require more analytical skills too. Fortunately though, you don't have to be left behind if you jump onto Brilliant. Brilliant.org is the STEM learning platform which can teach you all the skills you need for an increasingly digital workplace, from foundational and advanced maths to AI, data science, neural networks, and more. That means that the progression of tech and AI doesn't need to be intimidating. With easy to understand and interactive programs, you can level up your skills by spending just a few minutes a day on Brilliant, and you'll want to. Their programs have been directly built around the principles of active learning, so they're fun, interactive, and help you learn by doing. Plus, with new courses added all the time, there's no way that you're going to get left behind. To try everything that Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, click the link in the description. Plus, the first 200 of you to sign up will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. As always, thanks to Brilliant, and thank you to you for your support.